All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to discuss um, sort of a, a, a proof of sorts of why the, what we described as the envelope theorem uh, was working. So just to kind of refresh your memories, um, what had I described as the envelope theorem? Well, let's uh, go to um, trying to think of a, a simple example. So if we just go back to our, let's say, our, our um, profit maximization problem or our, our cost minimization problem. So let's let's take cost minimization. It gets you out of your comfort zone a little bit and thinking a little bit harder about the problem. Minimize our cost subject to the constraint that our output was equal to some quantity. So remember that we, we solved this for the optimal solutions. So we called those K star and L star. And what I want you to know, to be kind of go back and look at uh, those functions, K star and L star. So say in, in, the, in the video where I derive the general solution, Notice that k star is a function of the prices of each input, it's a function of r and w, and it's also a function of q, in addition to z and alpha and all that other good stuff and beta, right? So I'm kind of uh, ignoring some of the parameters just to look at some of the more interesting ones here. And so the same is true of l star, r, w, and q. As R and W change and Q changes, so do K star and L star. So what we did was we, we introduced the value function. Which is the value of my objective function at the optimal solution. So let me call that V is my value function is equal to, so I'm going to call this my objective function, my cost, which is a function of capital and labor, but also the wage, the cost of capital, R, and the quantity that I'm trying to produce, Q. Now it's also a function of Z and alpha and beta. Uh, but this will work for now, right? So V is equal to my cost objective function evaluated at K star, L star, and at whatever parameters I was given. So I take the optimal values, I plug them into the objective function, and I call that my value function. So notice V is a function of the variables R, W, and Q. As I change R, W, and Q, K and L change, therefore my cost changes and the optimal value changes. So the question is, you know, we want to know, for example, as I introduced last time, how does my cost change or my profit change if I change the wage? So how does V change when we change W. In other words, I want to know how does V change with W. I also want to know how does V change with R. I want to know how does V change with the quantity restriction, right? How does my, my cost change with these variables? Uh, or my profits, if we're thinking of profit max, which will just be minus C, by the way. Um, okay, so how can we figure that out? Well, I had kind of given you the result, which says that the, for example, the partial of V with respect to W is effectively just the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to W. And in the end, that's just going to be equal to L star. 
as we'll see. So I wanted to kind of show why it's true, and then we'll go through some examples, um, probably in, in a different video, um, to understand how to uh, actually use this. Or perhaps uh, it might be on Monday uh, when we go through how to use the envelope theorem and, and what exactly it's telling us. But let's let's first try to understand why it's it's true. And so here's what makes it interesting or, or perhaps surprising, which is the following, right? When I change W, the wage, we know then that, that given our formulas, K star and L star are going to change. These are all functions of a bunch of variables. And so when I write my value function, which is equal to the cost function, which is just R times K star plus W times L star, which was subject to then the quantity constraint, right? So why would that just be equal to L star when I know the K star is gonna change too, right? And L star is gonna change. And so, well, let, let's see, right? So when I take the partial derivative of V or differentiate V with respect to W and I work this, work this all out, Right? Um, what am I? What am I going to get? Uh, well, I, I'm going to differentiate the cost function. Take the partial of c with respect to k. Right? Because k changes. Right? So I have to use my chain rule. When I change w, both k and l are going to change. So I need to say, okay, how does the partial of c with respect to k? Do go, and then I need to know how does k star change when w changes. That's so that we can figure out. Right? We had our formula for, for k as a function of w. And then I also have to know how does the cost function change with respect to a change in L. And I need to multiply that by the change in L star with respect to w. So I'm just saying, okay, how does each part of my objective function change? How does the cost change with respect to L times how L changes with respect to W? Then I also just have one last part, which is how does the cost change with respect to W itself? And there's no change in W with respect to W. And R and Q can't change, they're constants. So when W changes, those don't change, right? So the, the total change in my value function is going to be equal to this big thing. Now, where's the insight? The insight here is that, notice, my first order conditions set that equal to zero and that equal to zero, right? So remember, our first order conditions to maximize or to minimize cost necessarily set those equal to zero at the optimal solution. So when I plug in for K star and L star, those first two terms go away and I'm simply left with the partial of my value function with respect to the wage is just the partial of my objective with respect to the wage. Now, one last step, and I'm kind of cutting corners here in a sense, and I can maybe um, post a, a description of a more thorough proof of this last step, which is to argue that this is just equal to the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to W. And in fact, that's going to be true, right? Um, why? Well, at the optimal solution, the Lagrangian is just equal to the objective function, right? So at k star and l star, the cost function is 
is just R K star plus W L star. Notice the Lagrangian at the optimal solution given R W and Q is R K star W L star minus lambda times Z F at K star L star minus Q. Let me just rewrite that so you can actually see it. Sorry, ran out of room there. So L evaluated at the optimal solution. R K star L star minus lambda Z F at K star L star minus Q. And the key part is that that constraint must bind, right? So this part here is zero. This last term is gone. And so L is equal to C at the optimal solution. So their partial derivatives will be the same. So what I can say is that the derivative of V, the optimal cost, the value function with respect to W, is equal to the partial of L with respect to W, which is just equal to L star, right? So all of the other effects, the effect of W on K star and L star are what we call second order effects. And because the first order conditions are, are true, those aren't going to affect the answer to this question. How does W affect cost? Well, W affects my optimal cost by L star. Right? So depending on how much labor I have, that tells me the increase in my cost for every increase, unit increase in the wage. Okay. So you might ask, you know, why, under what circumstances is that useful? Well, it, it tells me, for example, how cost changes with respect to a change in the wage or the cost of capital. Right? So if, if the minimum wage law passes and I'm a firm and I need to plan, and I want to know how much is my labor cost going to go up? Well, equal to whatever amount of labor I hire right now. Right? Those hours tell me exactly the increase in my costs for the increase in the minimum wage. All right. Now, one last kind of cool part of this is if I wanted to know how does my optimal cost change with respect to a change in the quantity, right? So in other words, what's my marginal cost for increasing production? All right, so this is marginal cost of increasing production. All right, it's partial of my cost with respect to Q. Well, according to the envelope theorem, P with respect to Q is just the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to Q. Well, what's that? I differentiate with respect to Q, and I'm just going to get lambda. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to Q is lambda. Now, what makes that cool is it gives me some insight into what exactly is lambda. Well, in this case, lambda is my marginal cost. It's, lambda tells me the increase in cost or decrease in cost from relaxing the restriction on Q, right? So this is kind of cool. So lambda tells me how much my objective function changes when my constraint changes. Right, so as you can imagine, right, if I decrease the quantity required to produce, my cost is going to decrease. And so lambda tells me how much I would effectively be willing to pay to reduce my cost. Lambda in our example 
how much would I pay to decrease the quantity to produce? Because it says that's the value to me, right? That's the reduction in my cost from decreasing the quantity. And so that's why you sometimes hear lambda referred to as a shadow price. Right, it's a shadow price because it's not really determined in a market. Right, it has something to do with my particular objective function and the features of that objective function. Right, in this case, it's my, my marginal cost of quantity production. And so, you know, if I increased Q, uh, that would tell me how much my cost is going to increase by. Right, lambda is going to be a, a positive amount. So, remember in our previous example, lambda was R over. Uh, the marginal product of capital. Or you could have gotten W over the marginal product of labor at the optimal solution. So those are, are the same. And so that's kind of cool. And so uh, this was in the abstract. And so it's probably a little bit unclear uh, exactly how this is, is working. Um, and so uh, in Monday's class, we'll kind of go through some of our examples and look at the value of lambda and how that relates to changes in my my costs or changes in my profits okay so uh do your best uh see if you can make a little bit of sense of this uh, at least to kind of verify the envelope theorem is is holding um and then uh we will see if we can make some more sense of it on monday